Hello everyone and welcome back to another Daily Job Stash Guide, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use every single shader trigger in Geometry Dash. Let's begin. So I have my level right here, I'm just going to go inside of it, and we're just immediately going to begin. So the first trigger, the shader trigger itself, just allows you to select what gets affected by the shader trigger. By the shader triggers. So... It's an insanely simple one. We're not going to do any real setup on this. We're just going to make it affect the background. The background, middle ground, just the background and middle ground. There we go. And I'm just going to click OK. And this one we're going to keep just here. So, number one, we have the shockwave. You can control the speed of the shockwave, making the shockwave be faster, as you can see by me scrolling by we can control the thickness of the shock wave it just controls how thick it is as you can see now it has ripples effectively because of how thick it has to be if uh we do the fade in and time off and screen off uh, it basically just means it is now going to happen here instead and it's, it's, it's going to be off screen and it's going to be a little bit off time with you hitting it. Now, the strength. This basically just uh, changes how much distortion the thing creates. Like right now, you can see it creates basically none. And the max size, changing that basically makes it instant i need to also add some strength the max size just seems to let's so, see yeah, the max size just changes the max size of the thing so yep and that is the shockwave trigger next the shock line which is the shockwave trigger except in a line Everything here is the same, so apart from these invert, flip, rotate, dual, target, and relative, everything here is the same, everything here works the same. Next, glitch trigger. So, as you can see right here on the bottom, the glitch trigger is affecting this. So we're just going to be seeing it through that. So the f we can change the fade fade time, the speed, the slide height, the max color, you know, the max color off can also be changed. As well as the strength. Like right now, I played around with it a lot, so it's basically invisible. But if I make the these uh, visible again, we'll see. The actual thing, yep, as you can see, we can see a little bit of it while still having pretty low strength. Next, the chromatic shader trigger. We're just going to click edit object. And we're just going to do target X, target Y, fade time, easing it out. Now this one, we're just going to remove our setup for, uh, we're just going to remove our setup. And we're going to add a bunch of objects here. So when you do this, you might know, uh, free to one. So when you do this, you might notice that there's no actual change. That is because you also need to enable use X and use Y. Or use X or use Y, depending on which one you want. And it's going to apply this glitchy effect as well. Next, we're going to be moving on to the next shader trigger. Which, in our case, is the chromatic glitch. So, as you can see, uh, if I lower the speed, lower the strength, line thickness, line strength, and stuff like that, you can see it changes the lines in the background and the way that the glitch works. I made it pretty floaty just now. It... Uh, it also works with objects as well. It, it is now just insanely floaty. So, yeah. The RGB off 
just changes how off uh, how big of an offset you have between the RGB and the actual line. The fade time changes the fade time and the segment height or uh, the segment H changes the segment height. That is the chromatic glitch trigger. You can't really see here. There we go. Yeah. Next, we have the pixelate trigger. And so we just click edit object. We click, we uh, select like, for example, 2.02 .02 target X. And we're just going to type that same thing right here 2.02. .02. Use X, use Y. And as you can see, we've made the game pixelated. As you can see, we can change the fade time. We can give hard edges. We can give it an easing as well. And there we go. We now have a pixelated ship game mode in Geometry Dash. There we go. Now we're just gonna move on to the next page of shader triggers, starting with lens circle. So here we can change the size of the lens circle, the fade time, the screen off on the x-axis, the center ID, we can change the fade time, the strength, the screen off y axis, and the tint channel. So basically, right now, what it looks like is this. It's basically a vignette trigger. Just gives you a vignette. Looks pretty cool. And what we can do, for example, is make it really small so that it becomes a flashlight. A flashlight effect, for example. That works. We can change the screen off like that, make the fade time longer. And so you go into a part where you can only see what's in front of you and you have to avoid it out of feel. That can be quite cool. And yeah, that is basically the lens circle trigger. Next, we're moving on to the radial blur, which is pretty self-explanatory. It just blurs in a radius. What you can change is the size, the intensity, the fade time, and the fade and the fade time, the screen off X, screen off Y, and some other stuff. If I click target, for example, uh, center ID, just player one, which gives a lens circle around the player. You can't really see it as well. You can see it right there, but we don't have any objects, so it's a bit more difficult to spot. But it does do it. It does do its job. Next, the motion blur trigger. This one's also quite simple. It might look complicated, but this is insanely simple. Target X, just the target X. Target Y, ref channel, follow, ease, fade time, fade, follow, ease again, intensity, and target ID. I'll just do player 1 intensity and we should become really good to show the trigger fuck me fuck me Ready one Ready one you also got to remember to use x y and use uh, use x and use y and now i can just show it to you yo that actually looks like a pretty cool effect for a level someone might end up using it This one probably has already used it. Anyway, moving on to the next trigger. Bulge. If I just go over here, as you can see, it just makes the screen bulge, just like that. We can do edit object. We can change the bulge. We can change the radius of the bulge. The screen off X. Screen off Y. As well as the fade time. And we can also give it a target of player 1. So that means that around player one, the screen bulges. So if I, for example, had a spike right here, what would happen is that spike would basically appear to be off axis. It's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool one, pretty cool one. The spike uh, seems to be like flying around and stuff. That's pretty cool. Next trigger we have 
the pinch trigger. If we go forward, it does nothing yet. So if we edit object, we enable use X and use Y. Does it work? No, it doesn't. If we edit the object again, we can see why. There's no radius. And there we go. Now what we can do is give it an easing. We can change the screen off, screen, uh, screen off X, screen off Y, but I've already showcased both of these. So these are pretty self-explanatory. I'll showcase the spawn trigger mechanic. Edit group one. Basically what you need to do when you're making a spawn trigger, uh, you just need to set this to a loop. Go to, to the spawn triggers, which are right over here. Group ID 1, you can do a delay with a variation, and instead of running at the trigger's location, it will run at the spawn trigger's location, which means you can have all of your triggers at the very start of the level on different groups, and you can just place down a spawn trigger with that necessary group at the part that it actually want, needs to be used in. That, so that's the spawn trigger as well. Next, we have the grayscale trigger. Pretty self-explanatory. It makes it grayscale. If we edit the object, you'll see there's not really that there's not really that much we can change. You can make it a bit darker. You can give it an easing, and that's it. With the tint channels. I believe that is just color ID. I'm going to be inclined to go with that being color ID. So let me just make a color ID for this. So if we tint it bright red. What's going to happen is instead of being grayscale the trigger will just make it red instead and if I place it further away in this way uh, we can go grayscale and then red from the grayscale so yeah overall the 10 channels can be very useful next now we've gone over grayscale it's time to go over sepia which just makes it this uh, cool yellowish sepia effect. If we click at an object, we can just change the target, uh, which basically just changes the power of the effect. That's about it. And the fade time, as well as the easing. You can also click this thing, just basically disables it in uh, editor preview. So you never want to click it. And there we go that is the sepia trigger next invert color it's very explanatory once again it just inverts the color so we just click edit object we can edit the actual rgb values as well we can ch change the power of the trigger change the fade time and select like edit rgb we can select tween RGB and basically create that this cool one of this cool stuff. We can we can just mess around with it. And yeah, that is the invert colors. You can use that just for a hue shift. Speaking of hue shift, here's the hue trigger. If we just go like 90 degrees, there we go. With an easing. We'll see that the hue trigger just changes the hue of the level. It's useful, and it's useful for very precise color changes. Edit color. If we click edit object, we can just go changing the base of the level, essentially. So I do that, and what's going to end up happening is it's going to look something like that. And it looks pretty cool. 
it is going full uh, right now it is a bit of a powerful one so it does just basically invert it again yeah it is pretty cool it is pretty cool next we have the final one split screen and if we click edit object you'll see we have target x target y and fade time it's once again one of those triggers that you might think it just doesn't work but that's because you have to go inside of it and click these two buttons and split screen target x there you go and it just works you have to click those three buttons and it's just gonna work although this isn't really all that usable unless you have like a super repetitive part and you want to make it look a little bit cooler so you'll always know exactly where you are that's the only one that's the only use case i really see here and that concludes this video don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications and i'll see you in the next one bye